Hello everyone and welcome to another Router Gods video. My name is Humphrey Chung. In the last video I showed you how to run Arista VOS inside a VMware Workstation. In this video I'm going to take you through some just basic command line stuff. I'm going to assume that you're probably a Cisco guy and wondering just how close the CLI is. You want to know some tricks and you want to know some resources that will help you configure the switch. So first of all, we're here at the router prompt, or not router prompt, the switch prompt. I've changed the switch name to switch one. I'm just going to exit out here and just get back to the, the regular prompt that you would see. Now the two main places for documentation, uh, one's going to be an Amazon book that's probably by an author that you know already. And then the other place is kind of obvious. It's the configuration guide, but I'm going to show you what's cool about Arista's configuration guide. So first, let's take a look at the Amazon book. Not Amazon book, but you can buy it on Amazon. It's called Arista Warrior by Gary Donahue. Now, if this kind of sounds familiar, you probably know Gary from his other book, which is Network Warrior, a book that probably a lot of networking guys have bought right after they get their CCNA or maybe while you're even studying for CCNA or other certs. This is a very good book. I just started reading it, got the Kindle version off of Amazon, and it's it's awesome. It shows you kind of the history of Arista, their uh, kind of their vision, the commands, and it's it's chock full of really, really good tips, as you would expect from the author of Network Warrior. So very good book, uh, pretty recent, 2012, so not uh, still very relevant and up to date. So that's a good place. Now the next place is Arista's configuration guide. So you can just go on Google Arista configuration and it's under user manual, probably going to be the first link here. It's their configuration guide. Uh, very recent uh, on my screen at this time, 25th of September, that's just a couple days ago. And for the current version, it's gigantic. So um, right after you take a look at it in your browser, right click save as to your Dropbox or wherever, that way you can uh, look at it later. Also what I've done is I've popped it onto my Kindle, my iPad, well not my iPad, I don't use the iPad anymore, but the Samsung Galaxy Note 12.2 Pro, that's my go-to tablet right now, looks phenomenal on that tablet. But basically put it on all your devices so you don't need to download this humongous uh, PDF ever again. But what you can see here, unlike other vendors, I won't name any other vendors, but it's organized into chapters, gives you a nice overview. It doesn't have that crap chapter that the other guy has about um, some basic stuff that takes up the first 100 pages or so, but it uh, gives you a product overview, initial configuration and recovery, basic commands to get you started. These are going to be the ones that uh, right when you come off the bat, how to set it up, command line interface. And then you can see it's divided up into sections, you know, AAA configuration, administrator of the switch, very easy to do. And it's, if you've ever played with uh, FortiGate switches, you know that FortiGate has their cookbook. It's basically recipes for doing specific things. This is kind of the, what you're looking at here is you can open up this configuration guide and say, okay, I've never configured ISIS before on an Arista switch. Bam, click on ISIS and it takes you through all of that. So very, very nice. It's the, just search for Arista configuration and then look up the user manual. All right, that's it for the documentation. Getting back to the actual switch command line itself. I showed you in the last episode, type in admin and you're in. And most of the commands that you're used to Cisco work, enable, ConfT, that type of stuff. Now what's really nice here is under ConfT, under the config menu, in Cisco you have to type do, show, run, right? And in Arista you don't need to do that. Actually, no, a lot of other vendors you don't need to do that. But here you can just type in show, run, and it, it works just like no, normal. Show version works just like normal. If you want, it just muscle memory sometimes takes over and you type an exit, that's fine too. You could always exit out and show run. But just realize that you don't have to. Going back to, to the configuration menu, if you want to configure a range of interfaces in Cisco, it was interface range. Now you don't have that here, but in Arista, it's going to be actually a lot easier. If you want to configure ports, 
one, two, three for Ethernet, it's going to be E1. Now, what you could do here is you could just do E1-3, and you're configuring all three. Also notice when you're in the configuration menu for a particular interface, it actually tells you what you're doing, where you're at. Not like Cisco, you are just configure interface. Well, what interface are we talking about? I don't know. So you could do that. If you want to do interface E1 and say 1 and 3, you could do it that way too. So they don't have to be consecutive. You can kind of skip around, which is really awesome. Commands in here run just the same. I'm going to do exit out just because of muscle memory. Router, question mark, you have router RIP, router BGP, router OSPF. If we take a look at router OSPF, notice that it bombs out just like in Cisco because you have to put in a process ID. And would help if I finish up router, router OSPF1. And when you do question mark, these should look very familiar. In fact, let's do this. Let me fire up GNS3 just for kicks. And we'll fire up a router and we'll put them side by side so you can see the differences. And you'll notice that the differences will be very, very slight. And I think that's uh, Arista wants that because a lot of people are Cisco guys and you kind of want to play with something that's familiar, right? And the Cisco router is coming up. And right click, I'm going to change the font to be a little bit bigger. And let's go for 14 point font and apply it. There we go. All right, we're going to go back to our Arista gear here. Conf T, router OSPF1, question mark. Let's take a look. Okay. Do question mark and go back to my GNS3 router. All right. So let's take a look. Area, we've got area, BFD, BFD. Uh, comment is, is new. Oh, that's pretty cool. We could put a comment in there. Compatible, well, same command. Default, default information, distance. Uh, distance, yeah, right there. Max LSA, I know for sure, is in here. There we go. Max LSA, max metric, maximum pass, network. All that good stuff is the same. So you notice that a good 80, 90% of the stuff looks pretty darn near the same. Let's take a look at your network command. Hey, that's good. Now you also notice that uh, you, it will accept slash commands. So very, very nice, uh, unlike Cisco. Now Cisco's starting to let you put in slash commands in different models, so they're they're kind of catching up, but but Arista's got it, got it down. Now, uh, show log in Cisco, show log in Arista, very nice, same deal. You can look at your logs. Uh, what I like about Arista is if you show log question mark, you can say, show me the logs for the last five minutes. So you can say last five minutes. Boom, that's everything that happened in the last five minutes. So it's very nice. If you want to trunk or put interfaces and in switching, switch for trunk, you know, there you go. Allowed VLAN, all that good stuff, right? You do switch port mode trunk. Same deal. Now you're probably wondering, okay, well, Cisco's got show CDP. Well, of course, Arista's not going to have show CDP because it's Arista, but you've got show LLDP, which is the standards, the open standards version of CDP or some type of discovery on the link local, right? So that will work just fine. And of course, things like uh, Cisco specific stuff like VTP, probably not going to have it, uh, but if this Arista switch will talk just fine if you somehow hook it up to a Cisco switch that's running VTP. You just have to set things to trunk or you know just statically set them. Now you're probably wondering, port channel? Can I do port channel? You sure can. Int E1. Channel group. Look at that. Channel group 1. Question mark. Mode. Looking pretty good. Active, on, and passive. You just don't have that other ugly one by uh, PAGP by, uh, by Cisco. But you know what? That looks pretty good. Now you're probably wondering, okay, what about um, what about show port channel? That should be the same. Show port channel one, you know, looks the same to me. So you could see here that if you don't know what to do in Arista, just try the Cisco command that you're used to. Chances are it'll probably work. And if it doesn't work, it'll be close enough to where you can figure it out. 
don't worry whether the commands are are exactly the same. It's not going to hurt you. I don't think it's going to hurt you if you use these for your CCIE studies. Uh, I think it can only help you. Of course, when CCIE Lab Builder comes up, you might want to just switch to that. But you know what? I think you should be just fine if you were to replace all of your switches in your INE or NARBIC topology, all your Cisco switches with the RISDA switches. I think it should just work just fine. In a future video, I'm going to show you how to trunk all four switches together at that core section that you see in all the CCIE practice labs. I'm going to show you, also going to show you how to hook um, the RISTA switch to the iOS V switch, uh, switch, the iOS V router, and just to do a quick uh, proof of concept where everything can ping each other. Once again, my name is Humphrey Chung with Rowdy Gods. Thanks for watching.